Welcome to the Stenning Shirt tutorial. You can see here I've made it in a longer length, but you can also make it in a shorter, more traditional shirt length. So I'm going to start with all the bits and bobs. This is my collar. One piece there you can see is interfaced and one piece isn't. I'm going to lay my non-interfaced piece onto my interfaced collar and pin it around the outside edge. There we go, and I'm going to stitch around. It's half a centimetre seam allowance around this outside edge. Here we go. I'm going to do my nifty little pivot at the corner here, where I do just one single stitch that goes across, whoops, put that down, that's set. Just one stitch and then I lift it up and pivot again and carry on. I'll show you close up when I finished because it makes a big difference to pulling that corner through and making it look neat. It just allows that tiny little bit more space for all the fabric to go into and turn through into when the time comes. Back stitch to finish. There we go, all stitched. Now let me show you that. There you go, there's that one stitch that goes across there. And I'm going to trim and grade fairly close to my corner, but not so close that the fabric will fray when I turn it through. And then I'm going to trim down my interfaced collar section, as that's the bulkiest one by half. Do that all the way around that part of the collar that you've just stitched. And then you're going to sort of turn it through. I'll carry on trimming mine in a minute. There we go. So you're going to turn it through and give it a press. There we are. So you can see that's all pressed and those corners look quite neat and tidy now. So next is the collar stand. You should again have two pieces, one piece interfaced and one piece just plain fabric. And we've got our original collar piece that we've just done. You can see I've put a stay stitch in there to hold the collar together, it's just a, a long stitch, just so that I can treat that as one piece of fabric now. That holds it all firm. This is my stand, so let's have a look. That's how it wants to look when it's on. So we flip that over onto the stand. That's it, like so. Match up. I usually put notches for the centre backs and centre fronts just to give an indication of where they need to start from. So I'm just looking for that now. Yep, yep, yep. Got all of those in line. Pop a pin in the middle. Then I'm just going to work outwards towards that nice curve, lining up all the raw edges as I go. They're slightly different curves, so you will need to just manipulate it a little bit as you go. That's it. So pin it all around. And then we'll stitch and it'll be a centimetre seam allowance back to a centimetre now. All the way around this edge here. Here we go. Taking that curve slowly because it's such a nice neat curve. Try and keep the shape nice. And then just a centimetre seam all the way around. There we go, one collar stand. That's how it all looks when it's pressed. Looks good, no tucks or ruckles. So now we're going to clip and trim around those lovely curves. You can always cut out little sort of wedge cheese shapes if you prefer. I'm going to get rid of those knobbly bits of the collar on both sides. That's it. 
and then I'm going to trim down again my interfacing side to half. Trim yours all the way around before you turn through and give it a press. So there we go, once you've trimmed all the way around you want to sort of pull these, the stand away from the collar and then press. There we are, one collar, all neatly pressed and ready to go. We can put that to one side until we need it now. Okay, let's uh, prep these cuffs next. There we go, we've got one interfaced and one not interfaced as usual. I'm going to place them right sides together. I'm going to sew around the outside edge, one centimetre seam allowance, and I'm going to do my nifty corner thing. I'm also going to just turn back the non-interfaced cuff section at the top by the one centimetre seam allowance and before I stitch. There we go. So one centimetre, I'm going to do that little one stitch across the corner again. And then back to one centimetre all the way along the bottom and the side. Incidentally, I like to do all these, oh, the sort of fiddly bits and bobs, I suppose, um, first when I start a project like this because it's quite a long sew. I think psychologically if I do them while I'm fresh and excited for a new project that somehow they turn out nicer. I'm not so impatient to be finished. There we go, so cut across the corners and trim up your seam allowance. There you go, you can see that single stitch again. And you can see where I folded that seam allowance back as well. That will just help a little bit when we pop the cuffs onto the uh, sleeve. Trimming back the side with the interfacing again to half. Do that all the way around. Turn it through. Tease out those corners and give it a lovely press. There we go. So give that a press. And then just do the same for the other cuff. There we go, look, you can see it turns under there. So next is the pockets. There we go, two pockets I've put on. Again, you don't have to put pockets on at all if you don't want to. I'm going to overlock the top of mine. You could turn and turn and stitch if you wanted, but personally, I don't like too much bulk on my boobs. So I'm just going for the easy option. See, I've put the notches in there so I know how to far to fold it down. Give it a press like that, and I'm also going to press back my centimeter seam allowance all around my pocket while I'm there. I'm using a viscose twill here, which is lovely to use, uh, it's nice and fluid, and it seems to press quite nicely as well. You get a nice crisp edge. So, there you go, that's your pocket. Another optional extra is a sleeve tab. I quite like these because I like to have my sleeves rolled up and it just means I can button them up there and they don't keep rolling down and annoying me. So no interfacing this time. Right sides together, stitch a centimetre away from the edge and pivot at those nice little points as you get to them. I'm not doing any fancy corner business here because it's too narrow and too small and fiddly to do that with really. So there you go, you just want to trim it down, cut the bulk away from the corners and also do a bit of grading, doesn't matter which one you trim down because neither of them are interfaced. But again just leave enough on there that it doesn't fray when you turn it through. That's it, trim it all the way around. And then you can turn it through and give it a press. There you go, one little tab. They're quite neat really, aren't they?
we'll make another one for the other side. Now we're going to put the sleeve tabs onto the sleeve before we sew the sleeve up and there's a lot of things to remember to put onto your sleeve before you take the pattern off. You want to cut that slash line there and you want to mark your pleats, the ones appropriate to your size. That is where we're going to put the tab on so it's like a little square. Obviously you need to do your armhole notches as well. Can you see there I've sort of chalked in a square And I'm going to just take one of these and show you how you just pop this little tab on. So I've got the pointed bit up towards the sleeve head and the raw edge towards the hem. And then I just fold it back over that square. Pop a few pins in and I'm just going to sew around the edge really. You can get all fancy with it and put crosses in the middle and things if you want to. It's up to you. Same as with the top stitching, um, you could pop some decorative top stitching on your collar and you could reflect that throughout. You can get all kinds of fancy if you want to. I'm just kind of showing you how to put the shirt together really. So I haven't done any um, fancy top stitching at all really. Here we go, round the corners. Following that little square and I'll just go across in one direction, back tack, there you go, it's secured on. Nice little tab on the inside, you can just about see the stitching there. That sort of disappears doesn't it on that pattern, but there you go, a bit closer you can see where I've stitched it. So if you want those, pop those on at this stage and do one on each sleeve, that's how it will look when it's done. Let's bind this cuff opening. You should have two little pieces cut on the straight to bind your cuff opening. There we go. You can see I've pressed the seam allowance back on one side. I'm going to do this probably back to front to how you uh, perhaps have seen it before. So I put right side to wrong side like that. So you can see the pressed area and I'm going to stitch down and I start off at my centimetre seam allowance and I take a centimetre from my cuff binding all the way along but from my cuff that open split I taper it off and then I taper it back to one centimetre you'll see I'll show you there you go can you see how that tapers to the point where I cut it and then it tapers back out again that will stop you getting any nasty tuckers, tucks and pulls. So press that binding and then you want to turn it and stitch it on the top. So I've done it sort of a bit back to front but for me it's easier to get the front looking nice this way. So nobody really cares what happens behind but this will mean that you get a lovely nice finish to the top of your binding. Do tack this or pin it if, if it helps you. Obviously I'm used to doing these so I don't need to just now. There we go. So when you've attached your cuff it will pop inside like that and you'll get a nice closure which won't have any tucks and pulls at the top. Nice easy bit next. Sleeve seam. So take your sleeve, right sides together, give it a quick pin if you need to and stitch down a centimetre seam allowance and I'm going to overlock mine. There we go, turn it through, give it a press, job done. Just need to do it for the other sleeve now. I'm going to stay stitch these cuff pleats in next. I like securing these down so it makes it so much less fiddly when you're popping the cuff on. Here we go, you'll see I've got notches here for my pleats and I've pinned back that binding there on itself. 
pleat two notches, pleat towards the split in the cuff and pin. Keep all the raw edges together and again bring those notches together, pull that fabric nice and flat behind so it's a nice flat pleat with no tucks in and pop a pin in. Pleats go towards the split. I'm just going to pop a big stay stitch in the top there to hold those in place. There we go. I think you can just about see those in the pattern. So that's all our cuff prep done now. Let's get these cuffs on. There's my sleeve, there's my opening. So the pleat side, the binding is tucked in and the non-pleat side of the sleeve, the binding is left out. So we start by lining up that binding with the edge of that cuff. Just about see that a pin in there and then just work your way matching the raw edges again popping a few pins in those pleats are all lovely and secured let's match that up and you can see I think where I've left that centimeter seam and now it's free at the end it just gives you a bit of better access to that edge when you come to stitch it Couple more pins. And we're going to stitch a centimetre down. Can be a little bit fiddly. So take your time. There we are. One cuff attached. Next we're going to press this seam allowance of the sleeve downwards into the cuff. Again, can be a little bit fiddly if you've got a sleeve board it helps. Just give it a little bit of a press and it just makes this part of the cuff attachment so much easier. You can press your seam allowance over as well on the other part of the cuff if it helps you. Again, centimetre seam allowance so it's basically just tucking that in and marrying that folded edge up with the stitch line that you've just sewn and just popping a little st top stitch there across the top to secure the outer cuff down. There we go, nice and neat. Let's trim away these stragglers. Again, if you're choosing to do top stitching or anything fancy, now's a good time to do it. Tidy that up. That's one cuff on. Repeat for the other cuff. Now we're going to move to the front of the shirt and pop the dart in. I had originally um, popped the pocket on this piece but of course you'll need to do the dart first because on some of the sizes I think the dart goes just under the pocket so you want to do dart before pocket. I've marked my notches at the side there. Going to match those up. Pop a pin in. Find that pin that I'd put to mark the point of the dart. Secure that and just stitch. Here we go. One dart, that just needs a quick press and if you want to stay stitch the dart seam allowance do so. As I said before I initially did the pocket before the dart because on this side it didn't interfere with the pocket placement. So that's why I'm making this one 
and it looks like I haven't done the dart yet because we've just switched it round. So I'm just showing you around all the notches you need to mark on the front of your shirt. You need two for the pocket, one for the dart. At the front you need an armhole notch, you need notches at the side for your darts and those centre front ones where you need to place the folds. So I'm matching up the top of my pocket with those top pins now and I want the side of the pocket on the left to be parallel to the centre front. Now I'm just going to back tack and stitch all around the edge of my pocket. Again if you want to do some fancy top stitching go ahead, this is a nice point to do that at. I'm just keeping this one straightforward as it's a construction video rather than a fancy pants one. There we go, all the way around. Nice back tack. And there's your pocket. Take your pins out, give it a press. Almost disappears on that fabric. There you go, that's the back. And repeat for your other side if you wanted the pockets on. So now I'm going to do the button stand. I haven't interfaced this on my design because I quite like them to be quite soft. I don't want it to be all stiff and sort of awkward looking. So I'm using these notches that I'd put in at the top and the bottom as a guide for how much to turn over and turn over and I'm going to press those. There you go, so they're pressed in. And then I'm going to stitch on the edge. There we are, just one line of stitching all the way. Again, you can do your top stitching if you wanted to. But one row does the job for me today. I'm going to pop this back pleat in now. So I've got my back piece here, it's folded in half. I've marked my notches there. You might want to mark your centre back as well. I'm going to stitch down two centimetres. So this is wrong sides together, two centimetres down, parallel to the top edge. There we go, just to secure it there. Then I'm going to open up the pleat. It makes a little box pleat. You can invert it if you prefer the look of that. And I'm just going to stitch across the top, just inside my one centimetre seam allowance so that I don't have to remove the stitching when I put the yoke on. There we go, one box pleat, stay stitched. Now it's the yokes. We've got two yokes cut. I'm going to place one of them right sides to right sides with the shirt body. See I've marked my centre fronts, or well, centre backs I should say, at the neck and at the bottom of the yoke. That centre back I'm going to match up with the centre of the pleat. There we go. Pop a pin in. And then move out from that point towards the armholes with a couple more pins. Then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to place the other yoke right side to wrong side and pin that in place too using that centre back mark lined up with that pleat. I'm just going to intersperse some pins between the other pins that are on the other side. There we go. Oh, I'll just alter that where it's crept a little bit make sure they line up beautifully. Then we're going to stitch our centimetre seam allowance through all the layers. And we are just adjusting anything that's not quite level. And that's our seam. So 
So there you can see you've got the two yolks attached nicely and we're going to trim down, I'm going to trim down the middle one this time and leave the other two as they are. So trim it all the way along inside, you don't want to watch me trimming all day and then you want to pull your yolks up and give them a press so that it's nice and crisp that seam line there we go that's better beautiful and I'm just going to pop a little stitch line in there so that I don't get any bagging on my yoke again another opportunity for some fancy stitch work if you choose to So I've just stitched across there, that's our yoke on. Well I know how some of you ladies go crazy for your pockets so we've put inseam pockets on this as well. Again optional, you can choose to put them in if you want to or not. So I'm just going to show you briefly as your intermediates, I'm sure you will have done this before. We've got a notch on the side there that's a pocket notch and we've got a notch on the actual pocket so the large part of the pocket at the bottom towards the hem because you want to put your hands in we're going to stitch just within the centimetre seam allowance there we go stitched in we're going to overlock just that part of the seam with the pocket on. Beautiful, then we're going to fold it back, give it a press and do a little bit of stitching to hold that seam allowance towards the pocket. So I'm starting a centimetre in and stopping a centimetre in as well. There we go. So you basically want to do that process four times. You've got one on each front panel and two on the back. This is the back panel. You'll find a notch there again, look, which will match your pocket. Again, make sure it's pointing downwards, match your notches, stitch within your seam allowance, overlock, turn, stay stitch for all four. We're now gonna to skip to the shoulder seams. There we go, this is my double yoke on the back and this is my front panel. So I've got these, these are wrong sides together. I've got the right side of my front facing me and the right side of the back facing the table. And I'm basically going to ignore that inside yoke at the moment and just attach the outside back yoke to the front shoulder. In some pins in. So you can see that's the two outsides, right side together. I'm ignoring that other yoke piece that's just hanging down there and I'm going to stitch my centimetre across my shoulder. There you go, I've actually stitched that up just inside the centimetre seam allowance again. You'll see why in a minute. So that's how it looks on the outside, this is how it looks on the inside. So I need to find that yoke again, there we go. So that's the inside yoke. There we go, let's flatten these out a bit so that you can see clearly. I'm going to take that yoke and I'm going to sort of fold it over inside and attach it to the shoulder seam of the front the other way, so we're bagging it out effectively. Pop a pin in there. Another couple of pins and then I'm going to stitch along that same seam line 
but I'm just going to be just to the other side of it, just that side of it. There we go. Stitching carefully so that it's just next to it. There you go, you can see there. So then there's no unpicking needed and no other stitch lines will be showing. That's it. So we just need to give it a press and, uh, and I'm going to pop a stitch line across there again like I did for the back. Just there. There you go, you can see it's stitched on the edge. Just going to show you how that is now, if I can get enough of it on screen. There we go, that's one side done. You just need to repeat for the other side. Next side seams. I'm just going to show you where I've stay stitched the loose parts of the yoke together before I do this just round the neck and things so that they don't flap around, stop them stretching as well, just holds them together. Okay, so let's get on with these pockets. Here we go. Let's lay these together, right sides together on top of each other. Start pinning from the underarm, make sure that dart doesn't flap around. You can stay stitch that down beforehand if you choose. Just one less thing to fiddle with then. And there are some notches here if you choose to put a little split in the side. Again, it's totally up to you. Don't need to, just a little feature that I thought was nice. I'm going to sew down and around the pocket now a centimetre seam allowance. And I'm going to stitch just to the left of this stitch line as I go. Right, off we go. Just hold that pleat down so that it's nice and straight. And now I'm slowing down because I just want to be just to the left of that stitch line there. And then I'm going to follow the curve of the pocket all the way around. And then I'm going to come just inside that seam again and pivot and whiz down to the pin where I put, I'm going to leave the slits there, so pop down to those notches and back tack. There we are. Let's give you a close up of that where I just kind of went to one side of the stitching, just so that if you've used contrast for your pocket bags or anything, it won't show uh, when you're wearing your shirt. Let's overlock all around the edge, give it a nice finish. There you go, then you just need to give it a little press and do the other one on the other side. If you want two pockets, you can just have one on one side if you choose. It's your shirt. Let's get this collar on. So here's my main body of my shirt, just arrange that nicely and here's my collar. I'm going to use this, oh you can see I've put a stay stitch in there just to stop it stretching too much on the uninterfaced side. I'm going to pin this centre back notch to this centre back notch, uh, there it is. So that's the interfaced part of the collar stand to the inside of the shirt, wrong side of the shirt. Let's get that front lined up nicely. There we go, pop a pin in there. Basically just pin it all the way around trying to ease in 
around any curves. There we go, let's pin the other side. Get those fronts lined up nicely, a little bit fiddly. There we go, and pin the rest around. There should be a notch that marks where your yoke meets. There we go. So a centimetre seam allowance along here. There we go, back tack. Just take it slowly. It's very easy to get little tucks in this when you're sewing it. So just taking a little bit more time and care or tacking it or just putting extra pins in might be useful. There we go, that's one side of the collar stand in. I'm going to trim down the interfaced collar stand seam allowance by half. So do that all along. Cut away any extra knobbly bits that you find along the way. I'm going to press that seam allowance up towards the collar before I then snip into it to allow it to go around all the corners nicely. So clipping at regular intervals, especially into the curves. Okay, so now I'm going to fold back the one centimetre seam allowance that's on the uninterfaced side of the collar stand and pin it again in regular places. You can hand stitch this on if it helps. Again, my whole point of doing it sort of a bit back to front means that in theory the bit that shows on the outside will look the nicest because it's the bit the side that we're stitching from we've got a bit more control over what it looks like so do again do take a little bit of time to pin if you're stitching by machine i'm going to stitch just on this edge all the way along here we go We are a little bit of a fiddle as we go, trying to get it as perfect as possible. And we're off. Here we are, this is what it looks like. It needs a press, but that's straight hot off the machine. I'll give it a quick press now and then you can see, hopefully you should have a smart looking collar now. Next we're going to put the sleeves in. So you want to lay out your shirt, grab a sleeve, now then Let's find these balance marks. There's the double notches that denotes the back of the sleeve, single notch the front, and there is the top notch there. Okay, so that sleeve is for this side. 
So I'm going to match my seams under the arm. And I'm going to follow my notches. There we go, that's the top of the sleeve one. There it is. And doubles. And single. Then just distribute any ease evenly into the sleeve head. Pop a few pins in and then you're ready to stitch. Okay, so I'm going to start at the underarm seam and I stitch my armholes from the inside. So centimetre seam allowance all the way around the inside. And you'll see how that ease just melts away into the seam as you go. So there you go, that's one sleeve in. I'm going to overlock it to neaten it up. There we go, trim off any straggly threads and pop your other sleeve in as well. We're getting somewhere now, aren't we? Okay, we're nearly there now. Let's pop a hem on this. I'm going to do the easy option and overlock and turn and stitch. Um, a double turn hem's nicer really, but I'm uh, just keeping it simple for this demo. You can see I've overlocked my vents already. I'm gonna overlock the hem as well, and then just turn it up and turn it over and stitch. Keeping it simple. So there we go, I've just turned it up a centimetre. See my ounce. Stitching all along my hem first. And then I will come off and do the vents separately once I've finished. There we go, back tack to finish. Fold those vents back. And stitch up, across and along. Nice pivot at the top there. And we're going to whiz quickly down the other side. There we go, job done. So, I'll just give it a quick check over. There you go. It's just a very simple overlocked and turned. Everything looks all right. Check that vent as well. Oh, cut that off. Okay, just needs a press. So we've got the buttonholes to do. Now this will be different for everybody because you've got different sewing machines, but Marking them out is sort of a similar process, so I'll show you that first. This is how I do it. I like to take my button and put it in the place where I think it looks nice so that when it's done up, it will look nice. So I'm marking that position on there for the collar stand. So I've marked across where the shank of the button will be. Now I'm going to mark down 10 centimetres. Again, you can choose whatever gap you like. Depends on the size of your buttons, I suppose. And I'm just going to mark down 10 centimetres all the way down the front. And pop a pin in at right angles to the centre front edge. Um, it's worth noting that traditionally shirt buttonholes are vertical, not horizontal. 
however it's your shirt you can do them however you want obviously I'm going to do vertical ones because I've already done a demonstration on how I do my horizontal ones so that effectively is where I want the button to be when it's done up so I'm now going to use that space from the center front that measurement to draw a line all the way down and that's the line I'm going to use to make sure my buttonholes are parallel when I come to sew them just short marking where those pins are in case I lose the pins and then I only really need to mark the top of my buttonholes or the bottom of my buttonholes because my machine measures them accurately anyway but I'm going to yeah just check they're all 10 centimeters apart I am going to um, mark the bottoms as well for you in case you don't have an automatic one so these are my practice buttonholes yes I practice do I've done lots of different ones make sure they're exactly the right size for my button nothing worse than a button that comes unbuttoned there we go so I can measure up the bottom of my buttonhole with that chalk and then pop a pin in so that you know exactly where to stop if you haven't got an automatic buttonhole that's exactly the length that you want your buttonhole to be so that little space there is going to be the buttonhole this is my machine like I say it automatically does them all the same size which is really time saving and a bit fancy if we're honest there we go move on to the next one and just repeat for all your buttonholes there we go that's them finished you can see the bottoms line up exactly with the buttonhole so I know they're all exactly the right spacings and I've done buttonhole on the cuff which I just did halfway along and the same distance away from the edge as I did on the front and this one I just kind of put it where I thought it looked all right because it doesn't need to be anywhere specific so now I'm just going to pin these fronts together as I want them to be when I'm wearing the garment so I'm lining up the center fronts there pop a few pins in and I'll show you how I mark my button position so I've got my center fronts in place and I'm just going to pop a pin right in the center of that buttonhole and then when I unpin this one you'll see exactly where I want to sew the button so that's the center bit the bit that I'm going to actually sew the shank do the same for this one get it all nicely lined up and then I'm just going to pop a pin right in the middle and again I'm just going to mark that there as to where I need to sew the button to exactly so do that for all your buttons and once you've cut your buttonholes sewn your buttons on you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Enjoy! <laughs>